Hi, I'm glad you could join me. It's Pastor Dale here. I am in the book of Deuteronomy. You know, you, if you've listened to these blogs, you know that as I read through the scripture each year, that I, um, that I cover the whole of the scripture. I read about a chapter uh, in different parts of the scripture at a time each day. In fact, my practice, uh, you don't need to uh, imitate my practice, but uh, find the practice that works for you, that the Lord leads you to. But my practice is that I read a couple of chapters in the morning in different places, and then I read a couple of chapters in the evening in different places. Different types of literature. There's historical literature in the Old Testament. There is um, there's prophetic literature. There's the wisdom literature. And then in the New Testament, I usually read that as uh, just straight through a chapter a day. And so I am in various different places. Now, that particular practice has led me to today uh, meditation on Deuteronomy chapter 27. But what happens is that as I read through the whole of Scripture, it brings back other passages of Scripture that I have already read. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 27, Moses is telling the people that when they enter the land, they are to go to a place called Mount Ebal and then another place called Mount Gerizim. These are mountains that are opposite each other. And they are to recite the law across there. Now he tells that to Joshua later on and so on. But, but in Deuteronomy 27, that one of the things that he tells the people there Listen carefully. He says, and you shall write on these large stones, that's in the second verse, write on these stones all the words of this law when you cross over to enter the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Now, stop and think. Uh, just 10 chapters before, just uh, in chapter 17, he said that when you get a king, the king is to write down all the words of the law. You can find that in chapter 17, uh, verse 18. I had to consult my, uh, my notes here. Um, but, that's, but that's the same thing that he tells the people. You see, all of us are subject to the law. The king, of course, needs the law right there that he can consult. And so Moses told the people, when you get a king, make sure that you write out that law so that you know how you're supposed to lead and govern the people. But the people are supposed to have the law written down there also, where they can always go and find it so that they know that they're supposed to submit to the, the king and to those he puts in authority. And so this idea of subjection is contained within the idea of writing down the law. It isn't just an exercise in, in writing and, uh, and diction and uh, handwriting. And it's not, that's not the idea. The idea is you need to be able to be subject to this law that's written down because that's how we're going to be measured. That's how the Lord is going to judge his people on the basis of how they have responded to the law. Now, when you and I stand before him one day, we're going to either stand at the judgment seat of Christ or before the great white throne. Hopefully it's not going to be the great white throne Hopefully you and I have put our faith in Christ and we're going to stand before him. But the measure of what we're going to be expect, what he's expecting of us is that which is written in the law. It is objective. It is not subjective inside the hearts of men. Uh, C.S. Lewis wrote a great article on subjectivism. And it's very, very significant that he speaks about the, the necessity of, of, of an objective outside standard. I can't, I can't say it as eloquently and as well as Lewis did, but I, I urge you to get an anthology of his uh, meditations and his essays and, and find that particular one. Because he's exactly right. 
when we when when things are subjective and not objective as the law is then then everything is measured on the basis of how i feel and what i understand inside me and and admittedly my mood changes depending upon whether i had pizza the night before or or not uh that's that's supposed to be a joke, but there's some reality there as well. We recognize that our mood and our understanding changes because of that subjective nature. So we are supposed to be, instead of subjects of our feelings, we're supposed to be subjects of an objective law, both the kings as well as in Deuteronomy 27, as well as the people. And I hope that, that that's the purpose and that's the reason you read your word every day, read the scripture every day, and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have revealed yourself in it. We thank you for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to its words. And we ask that the grace that you have poured out upon us would truly be manifest around us so that people might know that we have a standard against which we measure our lives, that being the scripture. Lord, we know that the people around in the world uh, measure their lives on the basis of a, of a subjective, uh, fluid kind of standard. But we thank you for giving us insight to understand how you will judge. So guide, provide, and meet us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.